Hi everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a tour of our cut flower garden in July. This garden is just about 100 square feet and everything that was in here, except for maybe one flower, was started from seed. We have two rows here and I'm going to start on the row on the right for now. You can see these two tea posts. Last month we had some flower netting between those posts and we had sweet peas climbing up there. But those are a spring flower so those are all gone now and I pulled those out. In the empty spaces, I am probably just going to sow something that's really easy, like zinnias or something like that. And I also have a couple of plants of strawberry blonde calendula here as well. These are a little bit of a shorter plant and the stems aren't super long, but they're great for just like little mason jar arrangements for the kitchen. And I really love the coloring of these, so mostly I just keep them out here to be pretty in the garden. Next we have our big section of snapdragons and we have a lot more blooming than we did last month. I have a mix of varieties here. The ones in the front are a double variety. I believe these are the Madame Butterfly bronze ones. And these are also called like an azalea type of snapdragon because they look like azalea flowers. I've noticed that on the snapdragons there are a bunch of these little tiny beetles and they get all up in the flowers. I don't really know what they are so if you know what they are please let me know in the comments down below. But they are all over these things. I grew snapdragons last year and I haven't seen these on them so this is something that's new to deal with. And it's a little annoying but as far as I can tell they're not doing too much damage so I just shake them out anytime I am cutting these stems for bouquets or arrangements. Some of the other varieties I have are a rocket blend and I also just have like a tall blend that has a bunch of different colors in it. I have just a couple of plants of pincushion flowers, which are these cute little yellow flowers. I think they are totally adorable. These were actually overwintered from last fall, I believe. In the next section, I had a bunch of auric last month and those have all dried out and they have also been eaten by deer. So all of the tops have been chopped off. So I'll have to come out and pull these soon and replace them with something new. The next section is status. Last month I talked about how I wasn't sure if I liked these and I have completely changed my mind. I've used them in a few bouquets and arrangements and they are just the perfect little secondary filler flower. And although these brighter purple and yellow colors are not the ones I would naturally gravitate towards, I usually go for like more pastel apricot colors. They do really well with other flowers in bouquets and since the colors are so vibrant, these are also supposed to make a really good dried flower so I've cut a few stems of those to hang upside down and later on in the fall hopefully I'll have something to do with those. Next I have a section of Silene blushing lanterns. This was one of my favorite flowers to grow in the spring. It was just such a nice airy filler and added a lot of sparkle to bouquets. I'm letting this naturally dry out here because I'm hoping to either save the seeds or let this re-sow itself all over this spot. Next we have some carnations, which are also starting to fade out a little bit. There's still some good stems on there, but honestly I am not sure if I will grow these again just for the reason that the Japanese beetles really like these. And I feel like other bugs do as well, maybe because they have that clove scent to them. So a lot of times when I go to a flower, there is a Japanese beetle right in the middle, like really inside those folds. So it's kind of gross and annoying. We have a really bad Japanese beetle problem here, so I definitely don't want to grow flowers that are their favorites. Next we have some dahlia plants. These still have not bloomed yet, but they're looking really healthy and they do have some buds on them, so hopefully soon. These seeds are ones that I got from purchasing Florette's dahlia books, so it's pretty cool to know that these came from her very own breeding patch. And I'm pretty excited to see what those are going to look like when they open up. Next we have our massive patch of yarrow. In the front here we have white yarrow. And this is kind of starting to fade a little bit. There are definitely still a lot of usable stems in there. I just have to pick through and I pretty much use this Anytime I cut flowers, I come and I pick a bunch of these because they're great as filler flowers. Behind in that empty patch last month, I had some little baby sunflowers that were a succession sowing, and those have gotten eaten by deer. There are a couple that look like they may be bouncing back, but there are also some that don't look like they're coming back at all. 
I have another huge patch of yarrow here. And for the most part, the deer do not touch the yarrow. I think I've seen maybe a couple of nibbles out of it, but for the most part, they leave it alone, which is awesome. Behind the white yarrow, I also have a Colorado blend yarrow, which is more of like a pastel colored mix. Mostly I've seen a lot of pinks there and there are actually some like pretty bright pinks too. And for the brighter ones, I am cutting those to dry and I wanna see how those keep their color. But my favorite ones probably have to be these peachy apricot ones. I also have some in our front garden and I have yellows in there and those are pretty nice as well. But back here, it looks like we only have more of those pinky ones. These guys are a little shorter than the white yarrow, but a lot of the white yarrow was actually overwintered from the fall, so maybe that's why it's bigger. And this Colorado yarrow was transplanted in the spring. I had also interplanted sunflowers with that yarrow in the back, hoping that that would deter the deer, but unfortunately it didn't really work and they just ate around the yarrow and ate those sunflowers down. On the other side, we have more of their favorite flower, the sunflowers. At this point, I feel like I am just growing them to feed the deer. You can see here, we actually have half of a bar of Irish spring soap, and we scattered this around the garden because we read that they don't like the scent of it, so I'll report back and see if that works. But these plants back here have really taken a beating, and to be honest, I just am not sure if I want to grow some flowers, at least not back here in the future, just because I don't want to encourage them to come to this garden and feast on all these flowers, and some flowers seem to be their favorite thing. The ones in the back are branching variety, so the lighter one is jade, and this darker one is a strawberry lemonade. And even when they eat the tops, I might be able to get some side shoots out of them, so I've left them here for now. I have another planting of jade and it does look pretty bad, but I have actually harvested a bunch of these to use in arrangements, so it's not all deer damage. And I also came out here the other day and was deadheading. And you can see that the side shoots are smaller, but they actually are pretty good looking if you dig around in there. Like these two right here are really cute and they look really perfect, no deer or bug damage. So I actually might come out here and cut those later. And then next I have some pro cut orange sunflowers and I actually have been able to cut most of those and I've left those as well just to get the side shoots to see if there's anything usable. Next we have some Cosmos. These have grown a lot since last month. They've really shot up. And these ones right here are looking really healthy and bushy. When they were young, I pinched them at the bottom and this made them produce multiple strong stems. So these plants are looking really nice. And I don't think the ones back here have flowered yet, but I do see a couple of buds on there. And then the ones next to those have already been flowering, and these are the Rubenza Cosmos, which is more of like a burgundy mix. There are some of these brighter ones, but they also have like really dark burgundy purple ones, which I really like. Then we have zinnias, which have started to bloom more, and now that they are starting to bloom, they are just going to keep producing more stems, and I'm so excited for that. I have really a mix of varieties here, so I have like Benary's Giant, Polar Bear, Meteor Zinnias, just all of the different colors. I've noticed just a little bit of bug damage on these, nothing too bad, and hopefully as they produce more stems, there will be more to pick from. Then I have some lemon basil here, and this is starting to flower, which is awesome. It has those beautiful spires that you can use as a filler. These are a little on the short side because they did die in a frost, but they're good for like mason jar bouquets and things like that. Next we have some gladiolas, which are blooming now, and they have been for the past few weeks. This is the only thing in this garden that was not grown from seed. I grew these from corms that I saved from last year. Last year when I planted them, the corms were really tiny and then over the season, they pretty much quadrupled in size. And when I saved those corms and planted them this spring, it looks like the stems also quadrupled in size. So some of these things are really massive and honestly, they are almost too big for me to use. Some of them are as long as my arm. So I really have mostly been enjoying these out in the garden and I've cut a few stems, but not too much just because they are just so massive. And this is just a mix, but there are some really cool colors in here. This two-toned one is pretty cool. And one of my favorite ones probably is this really dark burgundy. In real life, it looks almost black when you first look at it, and it's just really neat. 
Glads are really nice as cut flowers because you have this long spike of flowers. You can pick them as soon as you see those buds forming like this one here. And as those flowers die off along the bottom of the stem, the top ones will open up. So you can just pick the bottom ones off and trim off the bottom of the stem if you need to. And it's like you have a fresh flower. And when you have so many flowers along the stem, you can really get such a long vase life out of this. Next I have Celosia and these combs have just been getting bigger and bigger and this hot pink color is so cool. I also have a couple of smaller ones that were succession sewed so they're a little farther behind and haven't bloomed yet. And this area here is really like a mishmash of things. I just threw in random plants that I had. So I have some basil here. I also have Sweet Annie, which is this bushy looking plant. This is supposed to be really good for wreaths, both fresh and dried. So since I only have a couple of plants that survived, I might just cut those and dry them. And later on around Christmas time, I will see if I can incorporate these in a wreath. I think even just alone, they look very Christmassy. They look like little mini Christmas trees. Next we have one of my current favorite sections and that's the straw flowers. These flowers are so cool. They basically feel like they're dried even when they're fresh. So when you run your fingers over them, they have a very papery sound to them and they are supposed to be really good for drying. So I have been picking these and my plan is I'm just going to dry the tops of them without the stems and I sell soap online at our Etsy shop and if I have enough of these, I want to be able to include a couple of these anytime someone buys like a soap gift set. I just think it would be a really nice and fun way to be able to share the garden with people. At first I had only bought a packet of apricot straw flowers because again that's my favorite color but then eventually I decided to buy a mix of all different colors and I'm so glad I did because there are so many fun colors in that mix and they show up so vibrantly in these flowers. We have another flower that's great for drying and this is Gomfrina and I have this in a red color but you can also buy it in like white and purple and when you just look at it from far away they just look like little polka dots. They are so bright and cheery and the blooms almost look like clover blooms and they're really cute little buttons. And again I've been picking these stems and hanging them upside down to dry. Since they have such a vibrant color already I think they'll do really well like that. Next we have Feverfew, which has started to bloom, and I know I'm saying this about every flower, but these really are one of my current favorite ones. To me, they are everything that baby's breath wants to be. They are just that perfect white flower that goes with any bouquet, and I also really love that tiny little hint of yellow or chartreuse green in the center. They just go with everything. I picked them for a little mason jar bouquet the other day, and they were one of the last things remaining in the vase as well when everything else had kind of died. We've got a couple more random snapdragons, and then we have a big patch of Chinese forget-me-not. These are pretty much done. I'm just letting them go to seed because I really enjoyed these flowers this spring. So I've been trying to save the seed by pulling them off, but I'm also just letting them dry naturally on the plant. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to save all of these different seeds from these flowers. And these seeds are pretty interesting. They have like sort of this fuzzy spiky kind of thing to them, and they stick to you kind of like Velcro. Next we have some Dara. I have only cut one stem of this so far and there are a bunch of other buds but the deer also ate these ones and I guess it kind of makes sense because this is basically like a wild carrot and they do also really like carrot tops so yeah we'll see if we get anything else out of those because they are really beautiful. Then we have some bunny tails grass which doesn't look like it's grown from last month and hasn't bloomed yet so we'll move on to the frosted explosion grass which has started blooming and this is so cool. This is also called fiber optics grass I believe and you can pretty much see why. It looks like little fireworks and I cannot wait to cut these for an arrangement because they are just so neat. They're really cool when they're opened up but I think they also look cool when they are just starting and have these little like sprays. The stems are a little short, but that could totally just be my fault in leaving them in the plug trays too long. I have a couple of remaining stems of Bupleurum left. This was a really great one to have. It's another one where that chartreuse green color goes with everything and brightens up any bouquet or arrangement, so I really want to grow more of this next year. We have some more Cosmos here, and they're a little short because I think I accidentally stunted them. And lastly, we have more zinnias. 
This one here is a Zinderella Peach Zinnia, and interestingly enough, I didn't think that I would like these ones because they have a little bit of a different shape from a normal Zinnia, but they're turning out to be one of my favorites. I think that the shape is just so unique and cute. And then we also have some Queen Lime Zinnia, so these ones here I believe are the Queen Lime Red, and I also have Queen Lime Orange in the back. And then at the very end, I have Envy Zinnias, which are just like a lime green zinnia. And yeah, that brings us to the end of the flower garden. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour this month. Please make sure you like this video and subscribe for more like this, and we'll see you again in the next video.